Welcome everybody to Rob's Moto Works. Tonight we are at the home studio to celebrate a very special project, one that comes along every great while. And the men at the heart of it are Stuart Batlord Lawrence and the man Robert Williams from Igniter. Gentlemen, welcome to the Rob's Motor Works Studio. Great to finally have you both here, I think for the first time. Yes, yes, thank you very much for having us. <laughs> we are very excited and loving having my second appearance on Rob's Metal Works, Rob. Yes, it's been quite some time, Robert, which is Mark, I think, when we were partying at Bonds or something like that. Yeah, was it Bonds or the Corova? No, it was Bonds. You're right, it was Bonds. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to have you guys back. I'm really stoked because uh, you guys uh, gave me the privilege of, of sending me your new project. For all you people out there, it's called Texas Metal Outlaws. Oh, God. Where do we start with that name? Because you can really read so much into it. Obviously, we're proud of our heritage here uh, in Texas with, with all the metal that we love and do. Uh, so let's kind of get started. I think people know, you guys are veterans. People know you guys. Um, you guys have worked on, on lots of music in the past. So let's kind of jump right into the new stuff, okay? And I think that's what people want to hear about uh, and people who are getting their hands on the, on the music uh, today, on the CD. So uh, let's first talk about uh, the concept. What was the idea? Uh, what did you guys want to accomplish with, with Texas Metal Outlaws? What, how did it kind of come together? Well, uh, the, the, the last Witch's Mark record I did... Uh, if anyone out there has seen the, the album cover for, for Witching Metal Ritual, it, it got a lot of, a lot of people in the, in the press kind of rubbed them the wrong way, the, the PC police, and they were saying it was too over the top or too chauvinistic or, you know, flaunting alcohol too much or too violent. And I was really excited about that. I, I, I like, loved that kind of uh, over the top attention. And I thought it could only do good things for the band. So we had already branded ourselves as the bringers of heavy metal death and we'd already put a song on there where none can follow so I was like you know let's keep this branding going guys let's be Texas Metal Outlaws and uh, the other three dudes in the band were like uh yeah no let's let's not do that and uh we we went and did the the Ragnarokker Metal Apocalypse Festival in Chicago Illinois and played the main stage and things were going good and then we came home and lost our bass player at the time but, uh, he was my number one drinking buddy at the time, Andy Gonzalez. And uh, after that, you know, I kind of was like, well, who am I going to drink and bro down with and play metal with now? And I, we recorded at Stewart's place for that album. And I started thinking to myself, well, if I need to bro down and be metal with anyone, it's, you know, Stewart and Brendan from Igniter. So I started hanging out at their house a lot. And I asked Stewart one day, you know, would, would you help me demo out this song I got? And it's the title track, Texas Metal Outlaws. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at, at that uh, Ragnarok and Metal Apocalypse in Chicago, I, I'd seen Donnie Van Stavern, and, you know, we were talking in the parking lot and visiting. And when I got home and, you know, I already got Stuart on the other guitar, I thought, well, I mean, let me see if Donnie would, you know, play bass on this. And uh, Donnie went ahead and played bass on it, and then... Uh, Either Stuart or me, one of us was like, "Well, why don't we, why don't we get Jason to sing on it?" So we got Jason to sing on it, and I was uh, at an academy outdoor, you know, sports and outdoor store, and I was trying to take a piss. I was headed towards the back of the store for the men's room, and this guy stopped me and was like, "Hey, man, cool shirt!" And I was wearing my Man of War shirt, and it was uh, Felix Griffin from DRI, like one of my childhood idols. And so, you know, that led to me asking him, hey, dude, we got this thing going, a lot of great players, you want to play drums on it? And of course, you know, being an old schooler, he knew Stuart and yeah. he knew Jason and all them, so he said yeah. So the original plan, I think, was just to do a, a, a split vinyl, you know, A side, B side, until you find out that no one wants to finance your awesome project for an A side and a B side, because vinyl costs so much fucking money. So, um... At around the same time, uh, you know, uh, the dictators were coming through with my favorite guitar player, my friend uh, Ross the Boss Friedman. Yep. And I was backstage at the Dictators show in Austin, and I ran into Carlos Zima from Immortal Guardian, who was backstage also. And uh, he happened to know uh, Stu Marshall, who's in another band with Ross, and and we took a photo together, and, and me and Stuart were already demoing out this other song. 
And I thought, you know what? Let's let's get Carlos let's get Carlos Zeman to sing on this one. So after after that came about, you know, like every other month we'd be like, okay, well, who's gonna sing on this one? You know, and we just kept it going. But man, working with 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 Carlos on uh, on that tune was just a riot because he shows up in his motorcycle. And um, me and Stuart were, you know, concerned about having enough beer for the session. So Stuart's like, Robert, go do a beer run. And uh, we said, Carlos, can we get you anything? And he was like, yeah, get me like three McDouble cheeseburgers. Oh, God. <laughs> and I just want to say this, this set the, the men from the boys. This is the deep end of the pool. He co- I come back. I give Carlos his burgers. He inhales them one after another, listens to the song like one time, has all his lyrics written down, and he's like, he's like writes them out there, yeah. like he's he, he came just knowing he's awesome and just going to be able to do it, but he wasn't prepared. But he shows up, he eats the burgers, and then he starts writing down these lyrics after hearing the song once, and he just walks in there and just knocks it out. Wow. And we're just like, Jesus fucking Christ. Wow. Yeah, it was unbelievable. So, you know, we got to work with a a lot of uh, different musicians. But yeah, that that story for the song Rebel Years is is one of my favorites because it was just so wacky. I'd never seen anything like it. Most most of the time, you know, we'll we'll send a vocalist a song. And a couple weeks, you know, three weeks later, a month later, they'll be like, okay, I'm ready. Let's do this. You know, I've thought about it for a long time and I'm ready. But yeah, that one was just... Fly by the seat of your pants. So uh, initially, you had just kind of brought in this track, the Texas Metal Outlaws track, and I mean, obviously, Witches Mark is a really heavy band. You do heavy stuff with that, but this this kind of music's a little different than that. So, what, what were you going for musically? Because it's a different vibe for you. Well, I just like keeping things over the top. You know, when I was a kid. My mom used to tell me I was living in a fantasy world because I was obsessed with comic books and metal music, and I still am. And uh, I wrote this song, uh, Malt Liquor Maniac, in, in my friend's living room. That's my favorite one. And that's another one where the Witches Mark guys were like, this is not going on one of our records. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, well, I think I know somewhere I can use that track. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. So, um... You you got you mentioned a couple of key names there uh, that you've had on the record, but also uh, there's a lot of other key names. Mark Zamaron from Las Cruces, James Rivera. Uh, you said Ross, the boss, um, so, and it kind of evolved into this collaborative thing. Um, if you kind of look at and, and at all the different vocalists you had on this on this record, kind of share a little bit about uh, how you guys, how difficult was, is it to make this happen? Because, you know, everybody's always busy, everybody's got their own bands, and, you know, this isn't something you guys put together in, in a short while. It took quite some time, right? Yeah, it did take, uh, it took a while just to get it done. And the other thing was is that Robert was writing the songs kind of as they happened, because he didn't, like, have, like, eight songs all at once. Uh, he had a couple of songs, and then he just started writing them. And, uh, and then as, as the demo for the song came together, then he would find a singer. And uh, I w- still, I'm just amazed that even though it took a long time, how kind of effortless it was. And part of that, I think, is just that he only got killer players. Yeah. And so, like, they didn't have to figure out how to play They're heavy. Pros. They're pros. They just come in and do it. So, yeah, they just they kind of just knocked it, you know, knocked it out. It, writing lyrics is a little bit, I always thought it was funny because Robert's like, okay, so... We got this project, and you're gonna sing on it, and you're also gonna write all the lyrics, and you're not getting paid. But but they all were like, okay, yeah, let's. No wonder they demanded cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah, all the cheeseburgers, all the cheeseburgers you can eat. But uh, but yeah, everybody just did such a great job. It, it really seemed pretty painless. Well, I think it's exciting if you're an artist were to say like, ooh, I'm gonna be in a project where all these other great artists are at so yeah i want to be part of it yeah it, it was it was a real neat experience and I, I i also like the fact that that though the certainly it's all heavy metal uh the songs are all a little different you know because we have different players we have different drummers we have different singers and then robert wasn't overly concerned with making like every song kind of cookie cutter like the same genre like you know 
The craziest thing though that he did was he put that that that's what friends are for cover on there. I don't know if you know that song. When he told me, uh, it's it's a what from the eighties? Yeah, eighties ballad. It's an eighties ballad. It's like yeah, it's kind of like when uh, it, it was. Uh, I don't remember even. Who Dion Warwick. Uh, Whitney Houston, wow. uh, maybe like Elton John or George Michael or one of those guys. There was like five of them. It's kind of like a feed the world thing. Where you get <laughs> and when he told me about it, it's like, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard in my life. But then like a few days later, he showed up with uh, rhythm tracks that, cause like I couldn't even really hear the song as a metal song. But he came, he showed up with these rhythm tracks and it's like, Sounds like metal, and so I started demoing out the song, and it worked great. It's one of my favorite tracks on the record. That one was a real fun one to make, because uh, there was this guy who lived down the street from me at the time, and uh, he was a high school uh, videography teacher, and he would get together and play these gigs at uh, you know local pizza joints with his... Uh, kids from his class and he invited me out a couple times and you know pay me 50 bucks here and there to play like really horrible uh, top 40 rock songs and when it came time to do that song I, I asked him do you have a harmonica and he's like yeah and I was like would you mind playing on my album he's like dude I'd be honored and so he went and learned the song and when he came over to, to cut it we got 10 seconds in I was like okay that's that's it He's like, what do you mean that's it? I was like, this is where we kill the harmonica player. <laughs> and then the metal starts. So yeah, that one, it, it's crazy because uh, that's what friends are for. It's it's cause like the spirit of the project, we're all bros and we're all broing down together on some music. So I thought it'd be fun to have you know a song about friendship and stuff. And um, it's crazy because the the singer on there, uh, Orlando Logan Perez and Jason, weren't even in the same room when they recorded their vocals. But if you listen to the last, uh, you know, minute and a half of the song, they're they're both going off at like you know one stops and another one starts wailing, and it's that's the only track with two singers on it, right? Nope. Uh, which other one? Running from the law. Okay. Yeah, we do a riot cover of Running from the Law. Good tribute for uh, Mark Reale and Red Forrester, rest in peace from Riot. And on that one, we got Mike Solis and Jason McMaster. So it, it, at home, I got a poster on my wall of when Igniter played with uh, Militia. And um, Jason doesn't like that poster because he wishes, you know, it was more like featured the whole band and everything, not just him and Mike. But I, as a fan, I think it's cool as shit. And I kept staring at it going, wouldn't it be cool if these guys did a track together? Yeah. And just like that, you know, we all went out to Chinese food and then went over to Stewart's and it just came to life. It just happened. So that was really cool. And, and also another thing to point out on that one is I don't think the world has ever heard Felix play anything that slow on drums. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I started thinking about that while we were doing it. I was like, wow, this is really amazing, you know. King of the Blast beat playing at halftime, so that was fun. Cool. And and Stuart, I think people know out there also that you're kind of like an accomplished producer, recorder, engineer, and obviously you recorded um, everything on this record. Um, did did everybody come to Austin and record in, in your in emphatic studios, or was that well, did some people send you tracks and then you kind of worked uh, with them that way? Uh, the people who lived out of state, they did, I guess I can't take claim for their tracks. Yeah, the people who lived out of state, they would record their own tracks and just send me, you know, like, you know, guitar lead, you know, Ross and just, you know, a wave of the lead. Uh, so that's how uh, the, uh, uh, there was also a couple of uh, uh, drum tracks, I guess, uh, uh, Scott for uh, the... Uh, Malt liquor, uh, malt liquor maniacs. Yeah. Uh, he sent me that, uh, and then uh, and then when we did the bonus track uh, for uh, the vinyl, it's uh, it's basically it's agony column with Robert, and uh, but our last drummer Chris Hallanese, he had moved to Portland, and I really wanted to to uh, use him because we I had never got a chance to record a song with him, mm -hmm. and he 
blows doors on that song. He really, I, well, I told him, like, if, it, if you think it's too much, it's not enough. Just go nuts, because, you know, this, that's what Texas Metal Outlaws is all about. Yeah. And he really, he really brought it. But that was the thing, actually, uh, his uh, guitar player, Rob, uh, from Witch's Which Mark, yeah. actually recorded, because he also lives in Portland. Yeah. So, so he recorded Chris, and then they sent me the tracks. How, I mean, it must have been a very kind of organic process because, I mean, especially like if, if you guys are like the, at the heart of this thing, you're like, okay, I have an idea for this song, this is what the song is, but yet at the same time you allowed, you know, obviously these great talents to come in and say, hey, you, you didn't limit them and tell them, oh, I want you to do this. You said, do your, do your own thing, man, bring your own kind of flavor into this song, and I think that's what makes a lot of these tracks, you know, really special and diverse too, right? I would just say absolutely. You know, it, it's it's great to hear what all these different guys can do, and uh, and, and it really it took some mediocre songs and made them fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, it did turn out quite well. So now uh, the big question is uh, when when will the people out there when will Texas fans and fans around the world be able to get their hands on? Uh, on this CD, when do you anticipate uh, that it will be released? And talk a little bit about who, how you plan to release it, and who's going to be releasing it. Uh, it's going to come out on CD through Heaven and Hell Records, and um, the vinyl release is going to be handled through Texas Metal Underground Records. And I guess uh, an interesting thing is that uh, Stuart and I wanted the pre-order links for both releases to be available on the same day, you know, so the press release comes out, pre-order link is available for both companies, and the, strangely enough, the record companies have been working together on this thing, so they both, you know, I think they uh, split some costs on artwork, and they're calling each other back and forth, asking how far along each other is, and so we're shooting for the summer, and um, it, as soon as it's out, you know, we're looking forward to getting everyone's feedback on it. And if you're a fan of Texas metal, I mean, wow, what a collection of killer players. You got guys from Bifist, and, and uh, you got guys from Hellstar, and uh, just Las Cruces, and on and on and on. And, and the old Austin bands like Watchtower and Militia, Militia in Agony Column. Yeah. And let's not forget about, you know, the, the San Antonio bands, you know, having Donnie from S.A. Slayer and Riot on there was so cool. And I'm just really excited for everyone to to hear this thing because as a, as a Texas metal fan, it's, it's you know, the, the, there's been a lot of uh, excitement about these old bands reforming. Yeah. And I know that um, here in San Antonio Rock City, uh, a bunch of these guys got together for the South Pop and they, they did a, a jam band where they played each other's songs, and I think that's awesome. And I also think that the same people that, you know, like that project, they're going to like this project because it's original music. So, And I, I think that's even more exciting. I mean, I was there at the Text Pop show, and it was kind of uh, surreal to kind of see like the Jarzombic brothers playing up there with with uh, Rivera and and uh, you know um, the guy from Carry On you know it's just it's uh, it was really cool but of course they're playing the classics but now we get to see these guys and hear these guys play uh, new tunes and new music so that's always exciting um, you mentioned something that I thought was really cool and for all you people out there who have not who definitely have not seen the artwork just yet uh, thank you, Robert, for sending it to me. Very cool out, uh, artwork. The, the the guy, the skeletons in the in the car, the caddy going down the highway. The cops are after him. Really cool um, piece of work. Uh, you mentioned uh, something I think is uh, pretty uh, interesting. You talked about vinyl and that uh, Texas Metal Underground is going to release the vinyl. We love you, Scott Fulweiler. Wish you were here tonight. Um, but I also heard that the people who get the vinyl are also going to get something a little extra. Talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, I, he asked for a bonus track, uh, just so it'll be different from the CD. And uh, So people will buy both. I want both. That's, that's <laughs> called capitalism. Uh, Marketing at its finest. But, uh, Scott's a smart guy. Rob just was like, all right, this one's on you. you know, it's like, <laughs> he's like, uh, I've done all that. You, know, you do something for once. And uh, so uh, 
uh, I came up with some riffs, and uh, I guess my first thought uh, was to get Richie from Agony Column to sing on it because yeah. you know he's a Texas metal guy and he hadn't been on the record yet, and uh, and so I, I got him on there. But uh, and then then I was trying to think about a drummer, and and then it dawned on me, well, Chris Alanis, uh, the uh, the guy that had just moved to Portland. It's just fantastic. And then it just kind of turned into an Agony Column song yeah. uh, with Robert. Uh, he, Robert did write a couple of the riffs in the song. So, so what he is did, the bonus track we're trying to tell you? It's called uh, uh, Black and Green. And it's, it's classic Richie. It's about being a drug dealer and making money. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but he's he's very convincing at that for some reason, and uh, uh, I, I'm really super stoked because it's the first time Agony Collins recorded anything since our last record, uh, way back in the woods yeah. from 1990. Yeah. Oh, I was I thought it was earlier than that, but yeah, I was long. No, yeah, you're right. No, yeah, I was like four, 94, 95. So that's the first time that we'd recorded together since then. So remember all you people out there, when the CD comes out, the vinyl will be out at the same time. Be sure to check them out. Um, I saw some uh, pictures on social media, on Facebook. Um, I saw that you guys are already doing in some, some production for some videos. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, what we can anticipate video-wise. Obviously, you know, uh, we, people need some visual to go along with it. And I, I saw that Donnie Von Stammern participated in in some of the video work. Um, talk a little bit about what track you did for the video and what can what can we anticipate on, on that end? Man, we're just having a blast, you know? All these guys are, are so much fun to, to bro down with, to make music with, and to make videos with. And when we all get together, we just, we really have a good time. And these are all musicians that, you know, I, I really respect and in a lot of cases look up to and, uh, and yeah, you know, uh, so far we've we've um, we've done a video for the title track, and it's very spaghetti western and brutal looking. And Stewart found some excellent B-roll footage, and uh, we're we're playing on a gallows pole, right? Yeah, I, I built a, a a 3D western town, and at the end of the street is a uh, gallows, like a big gallows, like a and two, you did this like in, a, in Austin, your home studio. Yeah, well, it's all it's all digital. I did it in After cool. Effects, yeah. but it, the, the gallows is like a two holer, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> and we're up on the gallows and we're playing, and uh, it's 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 uh, all the footage has been done, and, but the ha the video is only about halfway completed. The way that I make videos, it takes me forever to do them. But uh, just today, I finished a video uh, for the title track, uh, "Haunted by Rock and Roll." which is an awesome, it's all horror, like a girl gets torn to pieces and stuff like that. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's, it's fun. I'm really looking forward to getting this, uh, the uh, Texas Metal Outlaws video done. And um, just, just yesterday, I was on the phone with James Rivera from Hellstar, and he's, he said, hey, man, I'm going to be in Austin this weekend, so... Uh, you never know. We might be filming with him on Sunday. What a, what a blast and what an honor that would be. That so would be great. We're having a, a fun time making the videos. And I think if, if, if um, we talked about doing two more, we might do one for that monster doom track we did with Mark Zamoron from Las Cruces. So, And, of course, uh, your favorite. Yeah. We're thinking about doing one for Malt Liquor Maniac, too. <laughs> And that one is drink beer. Exactly. <laughs> I want to be in that video. Very low. Where's, where's my Mickey's at? Uh, great, guys. Um, sounds like you guys are just really, you know, doing this the right way. Uh, and again, I don't think we, we even mentioned the fact that this project took four years to record. It's finally going to be out. Uh, you know, I, I'm pretty good bros with Robert, and I didn't even hear anything about this until like it was ready to come out. You guys have kind of been keeping the lid pretty tight on this. Uh, but a couple of more key questions. One is, obviously, you know, um, there have been other musicians in the past who've had several artists on their record. But then when they want to go play shows, you know, it's kind of impossible to kind of get everybody to come out and, and do a show. Do you guys want to do shows or is that something that's 
that you don't uh, find any interest in because of everybody involved? Or is there like one vocalist that you say, hey, this guy could pull off a couple of tracks and maybe we could do uh, a show or two? Is that something that you've discussed or thought about? Um, it would be a dream come true. I don't think it's... For some reason, I just don't think it's possible. There's been a lot of times where we were all ready to, to do some tracking, and then someone called and said, actually, let's make it a week later, you know? So, like, everyone's got their own schedules and families and girlfriends, and it's really hairy to, to even get one of these uh, lineups together in the same place at the same time. I'm not opposed to it. I would be there in a heartbeat. You, you know, I'd do it for free, but... Um, yeah. But there's also key players that live yeah. in other places. And some of these some of these guys are working musicians, so if they want to yeah. show, they want to get paid. They want to get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. But um, you know, I, I think just even even getting the videos done is huge to me. So yeah. I think it you know, and in having the vinyl, having the CD, I, it'll take on a life of its own, hopefully. And you know, uh, metal nerds out there like me, the collectors, it'll be something special for them that will probably. Never happened again, but um, we we have talked. We we've done a little bit of talking about you know. Follow up. Well, we'll start with a single. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm I'm trying to talk Stewart into helping me make a metal si una vez, and uh, maybe, maybe we can get Selena's guitar player to do some shredding oh, on it. Better, so yeah, so you know, try and make things a little ambitious. Wow. Wow. Okay, so uh, work will continue, and uh, I, I, you know, I, I anticipate that this this record is just going to take off. I want to thank you guys again for sending it to me. I've been jamming into it, jamming to it, and it sounds just magnificent. Stuart, your your, your production on it is just great, and um, and uh, you know, everybody sounds pretty damn cool. Uh, you know, and if they're not recorded right, it's not going to sound too cool. But man, good stuff, good stuff. Um, so, you know. No Texas Metal Outlaws too, but maybe some, maybe a few singles. Then is that what you're saying? Who knows? Um, if this thing takes off, I mean, people are just gonna want to do it again. I would think. It, it, it was cool because uh, maybe maybe a month after me and Stuart started working on this project, Stuart was just like, "Well, hey, dude, how would you feel about playing guitar in Igniter?" I was like, "I'd kill to play in Igniter." Wow. And so um, you know, we see each other. Every three days, every so often, you know, whether band practice or doing a show, or we we basically made two albums in the exact same duration of time, and I don't see any reason why we couldn't keep doing that. Besides Stuart needing family time and you know time to relax, and I think God, I must be killing the mood over there, you know, at the Lawrence house. <laughs> I bet. Everybody loves Robert. You're like, oh, Robert's coming over. Uh, great, guys. Um, such just such a fun time tonight having you guys over. Thank you for coming to the Metalworks to do this. Um, any anything I miss? Anything that you want to share with people out there about Texas Metal Outlaws? Uh, maybe that we should have covered, or any last words that you want to share? Um. Yeah. I I want I want to make sure that uh, I give a shout out to. Just about everyone who took part. Um, I know that probably the, the toughest the toughest song on the album I'm gonna say was Within the Spell. That one has a real hard rocking kind of accept vibe to it starting out. And uh, going in I thought, you know, we did this show out in Houston with just a monster lineup. It was like Cage and Us and Aska from from Dallas. And um, we were broing down with George Call in the parking lot, and I was like, yeah, he would be great on this song. And that's just one of those things where schedule-wise, you know, finding him a place to record, it just wasn't in the cards. And so that kind of fell by the wayside. Every so often, I'd get a vocalist in mind, and I'd be like, you know, come do the thing. And uh, I was trying to get uh, my buddy and your buddy, Jeff D. from Cyrus, to do it. And I got Al Berlanga. Al Berlanga laid down this monster, incredible guitar solo. Yeah. And um, we're, we're missed not to mention him earlier. Um, unfortunately, uh, it just wasn't, you know, Jeff was working a lot of the time. He couldn't do it. But that opened the door to uh, meeting one of my really good friends now, um, Michael, who ended up singing on it. 
uh, he's in a band called Force of Rage, Michael Tupin, and he just did an incredible job. I mean, everyone on there did an incredible job, all, all those guys. So it was, I just wanted to make sure I didn't leave anybody out. I, I'm thinking I didn't, but I'm thinking I also did because there's just so many of them. And it was, yeah. Stoney's on the on the track with James Rivera and, and Larry from, from Hellstar. And uh, Cody, Cody Gilliland playing drums on that. He, he's a monster in his own right. And of course we got... You know, like you said, Billy. Billy was on there too. So um, yeah, it was it was a really fun project, Rob. Let me ask you something, and, and maybe I'll leave this in this interview or not. Um, you know, Texas is such a big state. You know, and you guys are from Austin, and and you know, a lot of these guys are from Austin and below. But when we think about like the metal scene in Dallas, you know, which which crosses my mind, maybe not as often as it should. There's a lot of legendary metal musicians from that area uh you know the guys from war beast and, and rotting corpse and and all these guys that would, were those are, I mean, even though we may not have you know as close ties with those people because they're so far away even though you know we're from the same state but you know you know if we're on the east coast you know texas takes up the, the whole east coast you know um would you ever consider kind of if you ever did another texas metal outlaws record say hey you know we love what we did before but let's, let's get some other Texas musicians, notable Texas musicians, maybe, who aren't from our vicinity, uh, and let them kind of come on down. Because, you know, we, I think in Austin and, and in San Antonio, we have our own vibe of metal that we do. And the Dallas guys, the Fort Worth guys, they have their own vibe. It's a little different than what we do. Uh, did you ever think about that? Do you, ever think, do you know some of those dudes? Is that something that maybe you would want to do? Well, yeah. Okay, so that was... Okay, let me just say it was a hugely ambitious project, and we knew it was going in. We had a lot of different names we wanted to work with, and we just started crossing them off the list. And while we were penciling them off the list, I'm sure Stuart remembers, at one point in time, I was like, dude, we got to write this really rocking thrash track for Bruce Corbett. Oh, I was about to say Bruce Corbett. And then, you know, before that materialized, before we could even reach out, he, you know, unfortunately had to retire. And, um... I was talking to, to 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 Mikey for a little while about you know maybe yeah maybe do a song with you on playing guitar you can pass it to your boy Phil and see if he wants to throw down yeah. and that we we never you know went further down the rabbit hole on that it would have been cool but um, I'm a very impatient person and we've been working on this since 2014 believe me the first time you put one of these all star lineups together and you record something kick ass. You can't wait. You're just, ah, I got to play this for all my friends. And then you wait four years. Yeah. So coming up on, on the on the bonus track, that's why Stuart said I was like, I, I'm just like, dude, here you go. You write this. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think that uh, with the success of, of this debut uh, and people kind of see and realize what you guys have accomplished uh not only just getting these people together, but doing some kick-ass music. And obviously it'll be successful not only here in Texas, but across the pond. Um, I think people are going to be more excited. Other musicians will be more excited about jumping on board and, and working. You know, And even though you know you may not be able to get a lot of these people into uh, emphatic like we did on this one. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, people are sending tracks back and forth if, you know, if they're you know, 500 miles away in Dallas. You know, it can be done. It can be done. Yeah, collaborative projects are fun. And... And uh, it's kind of interesting that it doesn't happen more often. And you know, I have a you know, I have a studio at my home, so I can do it whenever I want. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm all about doing more. Yeah. Gentlemen, okay. Any any last thing? Any any parting words uh, for your fans out there? People who follow your music? People who've always followed your music? Uh, thank you very much, and death to false metal. Rob, thank you for having us on your show, and thank you for all that you do for Texas Metal. And this this album is primarily for Texas Metal fans, so that's why we wanted to do this interview with you. Awesome. So it's been an honor, and thanks again. It's been my privilege. I remember when you called me to ask me about it, I was like, hell yeah, I want to jump right on board too, man, and be part of a very cool project like this. Remember everyone out there. If you don't yet have it, well, you probably do, because you saw this interview in the uh, CD. But get the vinyl, too, and tell all your friends about it. The band is called 
Texas Metal Outlaws led by Stuart Batlord and Robert Williams. You saw them only right here on Rob's Metal Works. <laughs>